My name is RTO, considered by many to be the best Renekton in the world. I am going to go over everything you need to know about Renekton going into Season 9. So let's talk about Renekton in the current meta and where he is in the state of the game. So currently I have him placed as a Bruiser Assassin-like champion. A Bruiser Assassin is basically a champion that has up to three to four damage items with some kind of tanky item and then boots on top of that. What that means is you're obviously not gonna be the guy that just engages on a fight. You will never be that guy. Your job is not to engage. Your job is to clean up after the fight has already started. You see, Renekton, he's not the engage because he only has a single target stun. And the fact that he has to build his fury going into a fight makes it very, very difficult to get his fight uh, started. As Renekton, if you use your devil dash, you'll waste any kind of fury that you have currently built up for that fight initially. On top of that, it's really hard to place yourself onto their carries without your flash available at use. So if you have junglers like Sejuani, Zac, basically any champion that can actually engage a fight for you, you love those kind of champions to play off of. Your job is to clean up after the fight has already started. Many people ask me, all right, Joe, why don't you just go tank Renekton? It's not that bad. I come out and say this, you know, if you're gonna choose a tank, why not Maokai? Why not Sign? Guys that actually do percent damage um, instead of flat damage that Renekton does. So if you build tank on Renekton, you will do no damage. A tank that builds straight tank it will still do some damage because they naturally do percent damage. So you should never build tank on Renekton. Like I always say, if your flash is down, don't even look to team fight, okay? I want to see everybody split pushing as much as possible. Again, if you guys have no idea how to split push the proper way, I actually uploaded a video recently, uh, the ultimate guide to Renekton part four that goes over split pushing. So I'm going to now go over the build that I'm currently running on Renekton that I think is really, really good going into Season 9. All right, so I, I cleared the space so we can go over every single item and why they're so important with this current build. So first item rush, I know I've had a lot of questions about this. I think TMAT's still really, really good. I know they made it more expensive. It's now 1325 over 1200 I still think it's such a valuable, valuable item on Renekton for many reasons. For one, wave clear. Okay, so if you walk up to a wave, guys, if you're, say you're in a bad matchup, and they're poking you down like crazy, you can literally go up to a wave, E, team at Q, and you clear the entire wave. So the enemy oppressive lander that's actually beating you cannot hurt you anymore because you just instantly cleared the wave. If you are ahead, you have the chance to push and now roam and help your jungler out in many situations because you can clear the wave in not even a second. So I think team at's very, very important in that aspect. Also, whenever you're using your W, if you cast your W, you are self lock stun in that position. Many people tell me whenever you W team at, it's an animation cancel. It's not. It's actually not an animation cancel. It's actually you're stunned, but you can still use actives and team at is an active. So it helps put extra burst out when you are doing your empowered W in a team at. Now, there are some animation cancels that come with team at, but that's for another day. All right. So next, we're going to go over Yumu's. I think Yumu's is one of the best items under Nectar. I think where Renekton's flaws are is his utility. He's very, very, very slow um, compared to other champions. Uh, if you look at Riven, for example, Riven's got three dashes on his Q and then his E. So he has four dashes. Uh, Renekton has E. If you don't land your first dash on a minion, then it's on cooldown. And the cooldown is 18 seconds level one. That is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. So I feel like Renekton really needs some kind of utility speed to, to make up for that lack of speed that, say, Rivens have, Camille's, <laughs> pretty much any champion in the game has that Renekton really just doesn't. Next, I'm gonna go over Black Cleaver. Uh, I think this right here is your core. Once you have your Yumu's and Black Cleaver, you basically shred anything, okay? So Yumu's gives you 18 lethality, and now Black Cleaver shreds up to 24% of their armor. So if they are a bruise your target, you're gonna shred them. If they are squishy, you're gonna delete them. If they are tanky, you're still gonna win the 1v1. This right here is probably where you're strongest in the game. This is where Renekton's mid game monster comes out. And I think these items really complete that set. All right, so next guys, I do like to get a GA again, cause usually I'm getting fed at this point. And if you're not guys, 
Um, 80 carries starting to get a little stronger. Those bruiser guys you match in top lane are now, you know, really getting some heavy AD. So having some kind of second life or just armor in general, GA is going to help with that. So I think it's a very, very, very good item. Now, the next item that I'm going to go over is all situational. Okay, very, very situational. Um, I've been testing out, and you can choose which ones you guys prefer. There is three different items I'm going to look at. Again, I'm very, very big on having 40% CDR, and as currently, we have 30%. So we want to make sure we do something about that. So first things first, we're going to go over Essence Reaver. All right, so Essence Reaver. Um, this item is a very good item for, obviously, 1v1's team fights. It can be very, very good, but it's situational because if you cast your R and you waste your R and don't get anything off it, now the passive is gone. It's useless, and now the item technically doesn't do anything after that. So there is that. Um, a lot of people get on to me saying, RTO, now you've got 50% CDR and you can only go to 40%. I know that, but the item is that good on Renekton. Again, your W can reset your Q and E cooldowns really, really fast and allows you to get two iterations off of all your cooldowns, which can usually delete any target in a 1v1. All right, so next, we're going to look at going over Dustblade. Again, this is an item that I'm testing over right now. I'll be spending a lot of time on this item on stream these next couple days. Um, I like the idea behind it, and it gives 21 lethality. So if you couldn't delete a target before, now you definitely can, because now you have 18 lethality, you have 24% armor shred, and now you have another 20 lethality on top of that. So it means deletion is just completely there. Um, I like that I can sit in a bush and possibly cheese someone with Dustblade because now I know if there's a ward underneath me at all times and I can even clear the wards and get experience, get gold, things like that. So that's really nice. Um, and then also it has 10% CDR. So again, it gives you that 40%, which I'm very, very key on trying to get. So the last one I'm gonna go over guys is, it's Death Dance, Death Dance. Okay, so if you see a comp that you're going up against guys and they are very, very heavy on bursts, um, and you just really need that sustain or delayed death or whatnot. Death Dance is a very, very good item. Um, it has 80 attack damage, which is more than Essence Reaver and Dustblade. Uh, it's got the 10% CDR. Again, gives you that 40% you really, really need. And now it gives you a ton of sustain. If you are looking to try to be able to match a lot of champions top lane that just completely outscale you, Death Dance will give you that opportunity. It'll very much give you the opportunity. And your team fight's not too bad because it's not like Essence Reaver. Death Dance is always going to work with or without your R. It's still going to help you out in many, many, many situations. Um, the cons to it, though, obviously, very expensive. It's 3,500 gold. And as a Renekton, guys, you are in, you got to remember, you're an early to mid game champion. So you want to try to make the most out of that peak as you can. So again, you could go for that 3,500 if you're snowballing really hard. But usually, guys, I prefer you guys go Essence Reaver or Dustblade unless you have Conquer. Now, if you went the Conquer route instead because you're reverse to say a tank, Death Dance is a very, very good option because now it heals off of true damage, physical damage, magic damage, you name it. Now you're going to heal a ton with the Conquer proc. If you are going PTA, guys, I'm probably going to suggest either Dustblade or Essence Reaver. Those are the situational items right there that I've gone over. Last but not least, guys, I really feel at this point in the game, this is really late in the game. It's probably 30, 35 minutes in the game. At this point, you're probably kind of outscaled in team fight situations. So the best thing to be most you know, uh, usable in these fights is to have a Titanic. Um, I think it's a core item I do at this point in the game. Titanic gives you actually more burst than Ravenous does because you can actually do an auto and use your Titanic to actually give you an extra auto on top of the Titanic proc, which gives you a major, major burst, which helps you possibly one-shot 80 carries. On top of the fact that it gives you 450 health, it gives you 40 AD, so it gives you a lot of little things that are really, really nice. So, first things first, guys, you are going to go PTA into every bruiser or range matchup, okay? Every single time. Let's keep it really, really simple. PTA bruiser, PTA range. The only time I want to see you guys go and conquer is say they are a tank matchup, like Scion, like Poppy. So, as the game progresses, they don't become really, really hard to kill. You can still easily kill them because of the conquer proc. Next thing, guys, I think Tromp's really good. Again, if you kill one guy, you get some health back, and that to me is really, really nice, on top of the fact that it does give you gold. So I think that's really, really nice. I've actually tested a little bit with Overheal. I wasn't impressed. It was very situational. Next thing, guys, I think Tenacity is really good. Um, I think Acrylity can help you out a little more in the early game, but Tenacity in general, it's just super, super nice. If they have slows, if they have stuns, 
Tenacity is going to help it to where you're not just going to instantly be stuck. Chain lock CC, which destroys Renekton because you can't put damage out of your stuns, right? So you want to make sure you can avoid as much stuns and such as possible. And Tenacity is going to help out with that quite a bit. Next thing is Last Stand. I've seen a lot of Renekton's going coup de gras. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, just give Last Stand a shot. You're going to notice the damage being 300, 400 more damage in most games. So it's really not even close. Renekton likes to live on the edge. He likes to live with low health and then just completely pop off so i really suggest you guys going last stand next thing guys i'm actually going the resolve tree um there is a reason behind this i actually want to go over one starting item that i'm doing that feels really really nice but i'm going second when i'm going over growth um the reason why i'm going this route instead of say inspiration or domination is because i'm actually stacking health to make titanic hit even harder on top of the fact that this gives you a lot of sustain in lane a ton of sustain so if you're versus a range match poking you down second win's going to keep healing you up just constantly healing you up the entire time. And then the healing gets ridiculous after a while. You're going to notice get to 100, 200 by not even five minutes in the game. Um, overgrowth helps scale up second wind and triumph because your health goes higher. So you start having a lot of missing health. You're going to heal up more from the triumph, from the second wind. Your Titanic's going to hit harder. And also, whenever you cast your R, um, it actually gives you, depending on what level you're at, it can give you 600, 700 health from your R. And um, Overgrowth has a thing where it gives you 2.5% bonus maximum health, which can give you up to 40, 50 extra health, which isn't too much, but it's still going to be more damage from Triumph, well, Titanic, give you some Triumph procs, some second win, just little things like that. Um, on the first rune, I am actually going attack speed. I really like the attack speed rune. I think it feels really, really nice. It helps with animation cancels. It helps with just trading in general, okay? Especially in early laning phase, whenever you're really lacking that attack speed, it's really nice to, be able to get like an auto queue on the target and still be able to CS at the same time. And I think attack speed definitely helps out with that. Uh, second, I'm going adaptive force, which gives you six attack damage on your rune. Again, just having some AD. Again, your all your abilities are based off AD, so trying to get as much AD as possible is really, really good. And then obviously, if you versus an AD matchup, go armor. If you versus an AP matchup, go magic resist. Oh, by the way, guys, that starting item I want to show you guys, I'm actually testing it. And I feel like this rune can actually use it pretty well. It's, it's a really greedy starting item, but I'm actually going Longsword, and I'm going Anal Beat Start. It's very, very greedy, but Second Wind's actually helped me sustain out quite a bit, and basically, you get your team at so, so fast. So I really have been running this. Um, give it a shot if y'all want to. I understand if you don't want to, but hey, you know, see what you can do. I will be running this on stream a lot to start the season. If I start finding matchups that I feel really bad with this, I will stop doing it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it right there. All right, so I think on Renekton, the spells that you should be running, the summoner spells, should be always flash. Again, you, you want to have flash. That's just a known fact that allows you to position yourself in team fights really well. It allows you to get cheese kills on people and they don't expect you to burst them down like you do. So flash is very, very important. Second thing I really, really like is ignite. I really like ignite. Um, I heard it's getting nerfed soon, but until it gets nerfed, guys, use it as much as possible. This makes your burst disgusting with, say, PTA. Um, and then even when you have your Yumu's Black Cleaver, it allows you to be able to one-shot people even more, you know, legit. Um, also, a fun fact about Ignite is, too, if you just decide to uh, go Death Dance, um, Death Dance works off all damage, and if you use Ignite, guys, technically speaking, Ignite will heal you. So just a little fun fact right there for everybody in the, that's watching this video. All right, so now I'm going to go over matchups you should literally just dodge. Okay, don't even worry about. Remember, if you guys lose a game in solo queue, you lose LP, you lose MMR, and that's just a no good thing right there. If you dodge, you only lose LP, and your MMR stays the exact same. So guess what, guys? If you play another game, you're gonna get the LP right back. So it's not that big of a deal. Again, abuse that system as much as possible. Um, matchups you should dodge is matchups that you just don't feel comfortable in in the first place. If you don't like a matchup, hey, just dodge it. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but there are three matchups I really don't want you guys playing into if you possibly can. First things first is Teemo. Teemo is a really difficult matchup for Renekton. Uh, Teemo, again, just has his blind. Um, he just constant pokes, so much damage to deal with. Um, if you do tend to play this matchup, again, do the anal beat strat, guys. Run second win. Try your best to survive the laning phase, etc. And matches can be really, really good there. Second I have is Mordekaiser. Uh, I've been laning versus many Mordekaisers. And I still can't find a way to actually just straight up win this matchup. 
that you're always gonna avoid situations, but if you do see a Mordekaiser in your solo queue game, you are probably not gonna win that matchup. You just can't win the lane. So your best bet is obviously just wave clear and just trying to roam and just not deal with the lane itself. So Mordekaiser is definitely a matchup you wanna try to avoid if you can. Last but not least, guys, hey, Jace. Jace is really difficult. This is more of a higher ELO situation kind of thing, but um, the higher you get, the harder Jace gets. And I guarantee you guys, if you get about D2+, plus, Jace becomes a pain to deal with for Renekton players. So just a heads up, if you are a Diamond Plus player trying to play Renekton, hey, man, just I always ban Jace. Jace is actually my first ban. I think it's the worst match of them all. But obviously, when I go in like Plat, Gold, Silver games, I play versus Jace, I will absolutely crush them because they're very hard and mechanically skilled champion. So if you guys do start getting higher in the ELOs, I suggest to start banning on Jace. Other hard matchups you're probably looking to dodge to um, are some meta picks like GP. Again, a hard matchup. You don't have to dodge, but it is a hard matchup. Uh, Cannon, hard matchup. Quinn, another hard matchup. Um, guys like that. Now, off meta picks that are really, really hard that I highly suggest you should dodge are Vayne and Lucian. Again, you will not see these guys very often, but if you do and you know their top lane, dodge it. Dodge it, dodge it, dodge it. I can't stress it enough. Those champions are one of the hardest things you can actually match up versus. And if you get that matchup and didn't realize it was top lane, hey, go D shield, rush that armor, try your best to survive, let your team carry you, things like that. Again, this guide right here is to help you guys win in solo queue and do very, very well. Matches you should also dodge, and this is more of a team comp wise. Okay, I want you to look at the enemy team. Are they all range? And do you have no guy that you can actually dash off of and get to your back line? If you do not have that, I suggest you dodge that game. I'm talking like they've got a GP top lane, they've got a Victor mid, they've got two ranged bot laners and a Talia jungle. You're not gonna be able to fight in that game. You are gonna be very, very useless. I guarantee it. Just dodge those kind of games. Also, look at your team comp. What kind of team comp do you have? Do you have an engaged anyone in your team? You have an engaged jungler. You have an engaged support. You have an engaged mid laner. If you don't have any engages on any of those three roles, dodge. Okay, because without an engage, you can't team fight. Without team fighting, you're looking to split push, and that could be very situational if you don't know how to do that the right way guys like i said i do have a youtube video out there that you guys can check out hopefully it can help you out for a future game as you guys know as of today on the 23rd when i record this video we do not know what buffs renekton's getting in match 9.3 so what that means is i can't tell you what it's going to be no one can tell you what it's going to be because what they're saying is going to be completely false but with that being said the buffs that i'm really hoping to see um is not so much damage buff and if you guys play Renekton, you know he can do a lot of damage. He can do tons and tons of damage. What Renekton lacks, though, is obviously his E cooldown is very long. Again, I was going over that earlier in this video, how long his E cooldown is and why I have to go U moves and things like that. Because I lack that utility speed. I would love it if my E cooldown got reduced by two seconds. I would love it. That's right, games. I'm talking to you. Also, you know, Jax has 350 movement speed. So Renekton has 345. Can we have 350 movement speed instead then? You know, one of those two things would be fantastic. Um, another thing that could be nice as well is um, a lot of these OP champions are kind of bullying us in lane. Whenever they're OP champions, they hyperscale. So it's like, shouldn't we have a phase where we are stronger in these kind of champions? So if they want to make that more reasonable, then make it to where either we get that utility speed or give us more of a laning phase thing to where we have more sustain off our empowered Q. I would like if they made it where the healing on empowered Q was a little bit higher. So it makes it where we are more of a laning phase bully. You know, that's to be really, really nice. So the general state of Renekton right now, I currently think is uh, Renekton is a, I think of him really close to an A tier. I don't want to say he's A tier. I think he's more of like high B, not A yet though, because I, I feel like for one, we fall off pretty hard compared to most champions. And two, I don't think we have lane bully status in a lot of matchups right now it feels like a lot of matchups are skill matchups with them just hyper outscaling us which feels really really bad also because junglers are playing more of the range jungle thing right there where they're not going like graves or playing talia junglers like that that don't have the engages like sejuani's and zach guys who really aren't picked as much it kind of hurts us because we really really need that bruiser guy to engage a fight so we can start up and actually do our job so until that's changed, I think we're kind of a B tier, close to A, but not so much, kind of a champion. All right, that's the end of the video. 
hope you guys enjoyed it if y'all have hey make sure y'all subscribe also if y'all enjoyed this content hey make sure y'all go check out the ultimate guide uh, it's very similar to this it's actually really really in depth on every phase of the game for renekton um and if you want more of a chilled relaxed kind of situation hey go check out our stream highlights and we upload every single day so with very very good content out there uh that you guys should definitely check this is guys good luck in season nine hope everybody gets challenging hope i get challenger shoot <laughs>